person in. Oops. Of course, it always wants to go to the transcription, which is not helpful. Great. So thank you for your time today. Appreciate everyone being able to be here and attend. Uh, as I just mentioned, the session is going to be recorded, so we will have that opportunity um, uh, for others who cannot be here today to review these materials. If you um, haven't had a chance, and before I kind of hop into everything, I would encourage you to bookmark this page here. I'm going to share my screen and show it to you. It is uh, the main page that we use to keep track of everything NOFO, uh, Continuum of Care Notice related, whether it is our HUD compliance materials for the competition or materials for you. So uh, you'll already see that we have detailed instructions here. There's actually already a video recording of how to complete the application. So let's say later um, in you know this week or next week, a couple weeks from now, you wanna come back and review what we learned today. If you only wanna watch a 30 minute video instead of trying to search through what could be over an hour long <laughs> video, encourage you to take a look at this page here. You can navigate to it by visiting the IHCDA page using the menu, going to Continuum of Care and looking at internal competition and these materials, uh, they're actually posted year round. So maybe uh, you have a staff turnover and you'd like someone to take a look at these materials uh, in the future. We try and update it you know, during the competition and then kind of keep things steady there, not only for your purposes, but of course for HUD's review of our materials as we uh, submit and prepare um, our application materials for that. Let me hide that now and get back to the good stuff. So I've got a couple of folks on today and we will do um, another kind of presentation um, once the competition starts. I think it would be great to get Howard on again for all of you to share information about the notice. If you're thinking about consolidation, if you're doing all those kinds of things, we can, we can cover that at a later date. We're gonna focus just today on the application itself. Um, knowing, of course, that this is a new system for, for you, for us, um, and knowing that we've changed it. I think this is our third iteration. So there was something several years ago, and then we did something different last year, and this is our newest iteration, and what I hope to be our long-lasting iteration of, of our renewal process. So i um, going to really, really quickly review some things before we actually look at the application materials themselves. I'm going to assume that many of you were able to attend our earlier sessions about the um, renewal process, about COC competition, its, its purpose, and the uh, theory and um, background behind it. But do want to hit on a couple of things to just kind of reiterate um, why we do this, what the, the framework is around this, and before we hop into the materials of, of the actual sections in the new portal. All right, so as a, a quick foundation um, of why we do this and, and, and why COC is different, many of you receive multiple federal funding streams and maybe multiple uh, HUD funding streams, um, and um, continuum of care really is different. Um, one reason why continuum of care is different and, and most importantly as we enter this process is that the COC um, process is competitive and our renewal process must be competitive. Our new project process must be competitive. Um, we have to have scores for you and, and it has to be a, um, a ranking that is based on a score. We also have requirements in our renewal application that HUD lays out in our notice every year. Um, the expectation that we have objective criteria and how many points are objective criteria, the, the um, expectation that we are measuring performance and, and, and the requirement that we do that. Um, one of the things we tried to kind of elevate this year especially is that we are bringing in more resources um, <clears throat> to evaluate how well we are addressing barriers to housing um, and housing first practices. Um, in the last couple of years, there's been a tremendous focus on promoting racial equity through the work that we do with the Continuum of Care program, and uh, that we address issues like reallocation in the competition, and we are collecting that information through your renewal application this year. So um, just as I kind of briefly reviewed at the beginning, but a reiteration, there are resources for you as a renewal applicant. 
Um, most importantly, uh, there are detailed instructions. Those were emailed to uh, at least one representative at your agency and are available at this web link online. And I'll copy that into the chat here as well. But please know that again, we try and keep these resources pretty live and up to date. Um, we, if we make changes, we update those resources. Uh, we try and then email them out as a as a follow up. But um, know that uh, as you as you may have observed, we are experiencing some staff transition. And we're doing our best to track changes in your own transitions as well. And and I know that we are um, we may be missing people. So uh, these resources are always available to you on this website. Always check here for the most recent copy of something if you're not sure if you've got it. Um, we've covered office hours uh, in the past as well, and we have uh, links to those if, that are on the IHCDA YouTube if you want to go visit that if you are a YouTuber. Um, and then we have these online video trainings that I showed you on the website, that 30 minute video that just kind of walks through an application and talks about it in a little bit more detail. And then of course, what we're gonna cover today. I just wanna give a quick shout out to our friends um, on my developer team who have been responding to emails over the last few days that I have been forwarding and uh, responding to as we get them into the community services inbox. Uh, we have technical support. So if you log in and there is nothing there, <laughs> which is possible, it's a new system, um, reach out to the community services inbox and, and we will follow up to get that addressed um, as quickly as we can. Um, I, we've been even making changes to accounts today to make sure they had access and are continuing to troubleshoot with people who are having issues as those issues arise. Um, and then of course we're having today, we will record the session and make it available on the website, make it available to you in email. Um, always happy to answer questions, but just know these are available to you at any time of day. Um, I know some of us may work in evening times and, and know that um, other staff may not be available to answer questions, you know, at 8 p.m., but these resources are available to you whenever you may need them. Okay, so uh, just kind of want to go over um, your steps for today, and there's one step I'm kind of missing, but maybe not. Um, IRPA is due June 26th at 5 p.m. If we, I'm, I'm gonna be quite honest, if we face significant issues as we're rolling out this new system, we haven't had anything that's been so detrimental yet that we've not been able to continue to rely on this June 26th timeline. Um, we we will and have extended timelines in the past when things have gone awry. So um, people are human, things happen. Um, the June 26th deadline is firm if there are no issues with the system. So if you are planning a vacation, uh, or if your staff member who completes the renewal project application is planning a vacation, please do that before you leave. I'm not gonna be able to extend individual deadlines for people because that's just really unfair to everybody who completed things on time. If you have a technical problem that's causing a late submission, we will address that one-on-one. -on -one. If we are having a system-wide technical issue that's addressing and causing problems for everybody, we will look at addressing that deadline. But please know that that deadline is firm and that you lose points if you don't meet that deadline. In fact, we had a number of, of applications last year that lost enough points that they dropped down into tier two because of their application being late. So those points can matter when when um, when the points are, are tallied at the end of the process. <clears throat> We wanna make sure you can log into Access Indiana. If you did not get an auto email to log in, go ahead and visit um, in our detailed instructions that that Access Indiana webpage um, is listed there for you. Um, and you can see the, uh, the process you need to complete in order to access that information. Um, if you just even Google Access Indiana, I'm fairly certain it comes up. Access Indiana is the statewide portal that our IT department uses uh, for systems, not just at IHCDA now, um, but BMV, if, you, if you've renewed your license plates, you have an Access Indiana account, but you're gonna wanna use your organizational email, the unique email you're gonna wanna use to access this application for that. So I don't encourage you, if you um, have a BMV account to log in under that BMV account, because for the most part, we have created, um, login access view view only or viewable, not view only, viewable access to those of you who have provided your emails in last year's renewal or have since emailed me or our team to say you need to get in. Um, and again, if you log in Access Indiana and the grants portal is not there as you review those detailed instructions, reach out to us and we will get you access into the system. Um, we primarily let folks apply who applied last year. And then, like I said, knowing that we had some staff transition, we subbed 
subbed in people or as I received emails from folks saying this person's going to need access, they're going to help me, uh, they, they'll be able to do that. Um, I can, um, I'll, I'll defer to our developer team uh, later on in the call to talk about Access Indiana if anybody has questions about trouble you're having logging in because we do have um, experts uh, available to address those problems with you. Uh, you're going to want to, after you log in, you're going to search for grants inside the portal. You're going to see that renewal um, pop up. You're going to see a little button that says IHDDA. You're going to click on that, and you should see your renewals there. Many of you have several renewals. If you only see one renewal, reach out to us and let us know so we can create those additional renewals for you in the system. Make sure that as you are completing your um, application, you note in those detailed instructions, those required attachments, and then you're going to hit submit. Um, you do have to hit submit at the end in order for us to get it. Uh, there's a button that says submit. So um, please make sure you do that in order to meet that deadline. I will also just say that as we um, get into this process, you may um, look at especially your performance data and think that it's incorrect. Um, I have my colleague Lori Wood on here from our HMIS team who can uh, do a little spot TA with you uh, today if you think there's something wrong with your APR. Um, and the other thing I'm just going to say on behalf of my team, the team of non-conflicted board members who score applications, um, please, please, uh, as you attach your APR, our preference is that you attach an APR uh, in this way. You, down, you get your APR out of HMIS, you upload it to Sage, and then you download it to your computer and attach that version. My second preference is that you provide us the zip file of Excel or uh, uh, equivalent files. I can't remember what the, their file type is called, and you attach that. That's not that's not the best way, but that is a thing that that is a thing you can do. My least favorite way to receive an APR for this process is a scanned version of an APR that is showing up as an unsearchable file. Because what my team and our reviewer team does is we we spot check data. And if it's difficult for us to find um, the data point in the APR because we can't control F on your document, it just makes it take tremendously longer. So I really appreciate your help in attaching a file that you've downloaded from Sage. It's really clean that way. It, it looks pretty easy to understand. Um, many of you do that already, but if you uh, are having technology difficulties and getting something attached, again, reach out to us. We're happy to help. Um, but please don't attach uh, like an image of your APR or an unsearchable file type because it just it makes things take longer. And I think you'd all like to have your scores sooner rather than later. Going to real quickly review the application sections before we dive into the application itself. Um, so on the front end of the application, you're going to see basic information about your organization applicant information. And um, there are, as it relates to this, you're going to affirm that you have an active UEI and SAM.gov registration and that you have an active registration as a uh, nonprofit eligible entity with the Secretary of State or equivalent. I know we've got one local government, um, so the equivalent attachment that you provide and have provided in the past is fine. Um, but please make sure that you are um, completing those front end sections. You're not going to be able to submit without them. Even though we know you and you know us, just please complete those sections. The scored sections come next. Um, they're, they're basically going to start out with questions about your project, your engagement with the balance of state, and uh, your engagement with coordinated entry, and that you're completing your funding and grant requirements on a timely schedule. We are going to run this list past, uh, for those of you who are HUD funded directly, we are communicating with the field office to make sure that we have correct information about your project. So if you've submitted things late, if you have an open finding on a HUD monitoring, all that stuff that comes at the front end of this, please tell us. Nobody's going to be disbarred from applying for funding. We just need to know, especially if we have findings on monitoring, so that as we enter the application process, we are we are fully aware as the collaborative applicant on behalf of the state, any issues that may be lingering out there that could be a concern for HUD. Then we're going to have our housing first uh, sections. Um, there's a checklist in this area. Please uh, We've rewritten the questions from last year. I know last year we had some concerns about double negatives and do I say yes or no because this says do not. Anyway, we've rewritten the questions. I believe that they're easier to understand this year. Uh, our, we've had testers go in and, and they felt like they could understand the questions. So 
go ahead and complete those sections. And then new to this year is we're actually asking you to provide a copy of your Housing First related policies. If you, as the grant applicant, you know, everybody has different organizational structures. If you don't know what those are, ask your programmatic person to say, hey, we need to provide our housing first policies. If you have project specific policies, if each of your projects have their own set of policies, please attach the appropriate ones. If I see on um, Aurora's project, that's their vision project, they've attached beacon policies, I'm gonna get confused. So just go ahead and attach whichever are the appropriate policies for that project. and. If you ultimately as an agency don't know which policies are housing first and which ones are not housing first related, provide us a copy of, of your policies and, and we'll sort through that. We are not going to be scoring the quality of policies at this time. We're just starting to gather this information to get a better understanding of this area. This is really an area of measurement um, that we're evolving on because as HUD continues to ask these questions about what we're doing to reduce barriers and promote equity, we really want to get a good grasp of what policies are out there and potentially, you know, um, do some peer-to-peer -peer learning on ways we can make improvements across the across the balance of state. But if you don't provide us a copy of your policies, then you will lose points. So if we, it's a basically a zero sum. If you don't give them to us, then you will not receive points. If you give them to us, you will receive points. And that's for this year. Down the line, we'll look at other opportunities for evaluation or feedback or scoring. Um, but this year, we're just kind of trying to get a lay of the land around this area and figure out how we might improve this measurement in the future. Our performance questions are next. Um, I'm not going to go through this entire list. We kind of really dug into the nitty gritty on this when we did our application office hours of, uh, you know, uh, before we had the approved application. But just know your detailed instructions will tell you which data element you need to select um, as you complete your, your calculations. Um, if you believe that something is calculating incorrectly, please reach out to the community services inbox and let us know. Um, and just know that uh, these are required portions of, of what we're doing as a, as a COC. And I'm happy to answer any questions on this today. Lori's got, um, Lori's on here and can provide answers to any questions you might have about data points. But we'll, uh, we'll skip on to the next uh, remaining sections before we hop into the application. Um, our equity and representation questions have evolved since our earlier conversation in April about what we are looking for in this area. Appreciated the feedback that we received and we responded to that feedback and our funding and resources uh, non-conflicted committee approved um, a, an application that I think was um, more in alignment with kind of a first attempt to start asking some of these questions. So again, appreciate the feedback we received in this area and just kind of want to note that we are asking questions this year about uh, whether or not we're serving survivors of domestic violence, serving individuals with significant barriers. Knowing that those of you who are domestic violence providers, I would hope are going to definitely be scoring on, on the, these DV questions. And understanding that those of you who maybe aren't serving DV folks, but maybe serving people with severe service needs are going to are going to be able to receive points differently in these sections. So I understand as we go into some of these, it can feel difficult when you feel like, well, my project isn't going to be able to score well in that area. We try and balance these kinds of things so that when you know, people are feeling like they're not able to access points in one area, they're maybe able to access points in another. And just know that, you know, while you may be able to score 10 points on one question, there's somebody else who's scoring zero. So it's it is um it's a trade-off, right? And we try to do our best to balance, balance those trade-offs. Um, but you know, we have to evaluate on performance and and on um objective criteria. Um, these final questions on lived experience representation are kind of an elevation of past related questions. And um, HUD continues to really push lived experience representation as a part of the strategic way they'd like communities and projects to report, um, address uh, performance and uh, project development, project quality, and, and you know, addressing policies and changes in projects. Finally, you have a bonus uh, questions and, and deductions. Um, you're going to see some additional questions on um, how your agency is reflective of who you're serving. 
So keep in mind, we're not just talking about the um, community, the broad community may be serving. Um, we're talking specifically about those experiencing homelessness in your community. Um, again, these are bonus, so they're just kind of extra and knowing that, you know, some of you may be able to answer yes or, or no. Um, are you incorporating client feedback? Uh, that question is written very broadly. Um, take that question and interpret it and answer it as you as you feel appropriate. And again, as a bonus question, this is bonus points. Um, looking at uh, collecting some information on how we're addressing disparities. This is, um, I think, another area where we're hoping we can gather information from our subrecipients and direct HUD projects to learn more about what's going on in the balance of state in this area. Um, what technical assistance or, or other training we could bring in to, to service providers to, to better support, um, you know, making improvements in this area. Um, and then finally, there is 15 points available in the application for renewal projects if you are going to voluntarily reallocate uh, a portion of your funding. Uh, briefly explain, essentially we're saying, are you willing to reduce your budget by a certain amount? And if you are, to provide that amount to us. Um, if you do that, we will follow up with you. We will confirm the amount you've provided to us in the ERPA, and then you will receive those bonus points. What will happen then is through the notice of funding opportunity, when we go to submit to HUD, we will submit a reduction in your budget to HUD, and then that new budget will be what you are awarded in the next FY 2023 funding year. So if you've got funding for 2022, on um, let's say your project starts in September and you've got funding for 20, you know, into um, August of 2023, your next grant would be what would start that new funding amount that you've reallocated. Um, yeah, so hopefully that clarifies anything about the reallocation policy. This is a, a board policy that has been set to really encourage reallocation through the competition. I want to quickly hit on deductions. So we will de deduce, deduce. <laughs> we will deduct points if you submit late. Um, we will deduct points if you have missing information. So if you fail to make an attachment, uh, we will reduce uh, the points in your application. If you submit your application with lots of errors or mistakes, if we go as we spot check these APRs and see that the number of clients you inputted that maintained an increased income was 20 people and what you put in your application was 400. Um, we're gonna we're gonna re, we're gonna um, on a, on a case by case basis uh, make uh, a decision about whether or not we reduce uh, points on your application. All of this information, your score and a breakdown of of how you scored on each question will be provided to you at a later date. So if when you get your total score, you see that score and you're unhappy with it, you will have the information to know to say. I would like to make an appeal about my score related to this specific question or this series of questions, um, and we'll go through the uh, approved appeals process to address any of those issues. All right, almost done. So before we can dive into any kind of, I guess we'll just say any initial questions right now before I go into the application portal and, and dive in deeper into more technical stuff related to the application. So it's easier to do this when I'm not sharing my screen because I can see you. Okay. We'll go ahead and review the online tool then. Let me open that up. Okay. So I am logged in as a test user at this time um, and have three renewal applications viewable to me um, in my portal. And I'm going to go ahead. When you come into the portal, you're going to see that there is home and COC renewals. Um, go ahead and just go to COC renewals or home. I think it should appear both ways. A little bit strange, what you're going to want to do, don't click on your agency, click on the number. Um, I believe sometime in the next week or so, this view is going to change slightly because there is a Salesforce update that's going to happen and you'll be able to still access your renewals. They will each still have their own button, um, but it might look slightly different um, because of that Salesforce update. This main page of your renewal, this is a unique application for each of your projects. So if you have four projects, you should see four buttons there to renew 
project one, project two, project three, project four. If you only have one, you're going to see one. And there's a couple of uh, sections here that you're going to want to note. The main things you're going to want to pay attention to are your application workspace and instructions. So we have these instructions here and you are able to, you know, it's a essentially a very shortened version of what we provide to you in the lengthy um, detailed instructions that are on the IHCDA website. But if you did need a quick access to the DV help desk ticket line or the HMIS help desk ticket line, those links are provided there for you. All right. So, um, what I will say is what I've heard from folks who've gotten in is that this is a um, fairly intuitive portal. Uh, if you see here, this is your first application section and you're gonna go ahead and hit get started. It's gonna open up some information here that's gonna auto populate for you. Um, and you can, you can um, change these things, but they're gonna auto populate from your account if we have that information in. If we don't have that information in for you, go ahead and add that and then we will have that uh, populated. We are gonna want your tax ID and your unique entity identifier. Um, this is the information that is the registration with SAM.gov. So please, again, make sure you're providing that. Congressional district, if you just wanna Google um, what your congressional district is, it's pretty easy to find that information. And we are talking about uh, federal government congressional district, not state of Indiana uh, districts or, or anything like that. So. We need this information to do federal government reporting throughout the year about where we as a state have allocated funding. Um, so appreciate your help in giving that to us now and then we don't have to ask you for it later. Please uh, select your type of organization and whatever is uh, makes sense for you in this portal. And then um, you can type in that there and email address, very simple. Email address, this should be you. This should be the contact information for you. Um, if you are gonna have other people help you complete the ERPA, again, reach out to us and, and we're happy to create another account and tie it to the account for you. That will just make sure that if you and someone else are both trying to work on something, you're both able to get in there. We're both completing it. It's not gonna be an issue of, of saying like, did Rachel complete this or did Jim complete this? Because you each have your own account. We've got a registration for Sam and our registration with Secretary of State, and we'll go ahead and hit next. Um, we are collecting this information um, probably for, for it's essentially our longer term uh, planning for this portal is to have this be a full grants management system. You do not need to provide a lengthy description in this box, but would appreciate if you put, you know, you could put just put that in and that would be great. Uh, project state, obviously Indiana, project county. And if you're serving multiple counties, just select the one that you are basing your fair market rates in or fair market rates, fair market rents in blah, 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 and uh, and put that in as well. We know that some of our partners are going to be serving multiple counties. Um, and again, I, I would just select the congressional district if you're serving in more than one. That's the primary location of where the project is um, and, and put that information in. Um, your PIN information is going to fill in from what was on your renewal for last year. So if this is this PIN is incorrect, please reach out to us and let us know. This isn't a deal breaker, but we're happy to make that correction for you. My organization does have unresolved HUD findings. Um, and so I can put that information there. If it does not, I can just hit no and that box disappears. When I hit next, that will cause that portal to save that section and my status of each of these will go from not started to completed. Just please know that as soon as you make any edits and save in here, these are going to look like they're completed unless you have um, not saved it. So if you are, have a required question you don't answer because you don't know the answer and you click out of the portal, it's not going to save. So here I'll show you. If I were to just exit out and hit this X, it's not going to save my my work. I already put stuff in here, so it's it, it knows what these questions and these answers are. But if you X out, that will not save. You need to hit next in order for that information to save for you. Then we have our general uh, eligibility questions and information. 
this relates back to how you've engaged with the COC. Yes, we participated in the Regional Planning Council. We did go to Development Day. Note that we're talking about in um, the last year. So I think we need to maybe just adjust that question because we used to list dates. Um, we're talking about since the last ERPA, since you last applied for COC renewal. So let's just say May of 2022 to May of 2023. Did you send one person to any Development Day event, including the one that happened in the spring? And either of those events hit yes. Did you attend any of these trainings? Did you go? Did you have folks go to a HMIS coffee talk? Did you go to an office hour session? Any of our training sessions that we hosted? Yes. Hit next. Again, that will save for you, and you'll see that this list has completed. Now, if I go back here and I try to um, actually, I don't think I can not answer a question. I'll show you what it looks like if you don't answer a question. Project detail and funding is now our next section. Um, we have two types of project that will be applying uh, through the renewal in this area. Are you applying as a subrecipient of IHCDA? I am a direct HUD funded project, so I'm going to hit no. And then I'm going to try and hit next. Look, see, it's going to error. It's going to error that. Now watch if I hit, if I X out. It's going to look like I have not started it. And these questions are going to be blank. So just again, make sure you hit that next button to save your work. So my organization is a direct HUD funded project. So I am not a subrecipient of IHCDA and I am a rapid rehousing project. All of my clients from last calendar year came in under coordinate entry and I'm gonna hit next. Here we are, this is the next page. This is one of our sections that has multiple pages similar to that first section. And these questions are unique to you if you are a HUD funded project directly. If I go back and I hit yes, I am a subrecipient, these questions look different. You'll see that there. So if you have a project that is direct HUD funded and you have a project that is you are a subrecipient under IHCDA, you will see that these questions are different when you go to answer them. All right, we're working through these. Housing first. These are um, the same questions as last year in a slightly different order with slightly different wording, um, simply because we had that issue with the double negative um, in the question wording where we had folks, some people thinking they were supposed to say yes, others thinking they were supposed to say no. Um, we checked these questions so that they mean the same thing. They're just written clearly. Um, does the project require clients to pass a background check? No, they do not. Do you have to have criminal or do you require a person with criminal convictions uh, to be excluded? No, we do not. Do we uh, require people to be clean and sober? No, we do not. Do we serve individuals and families regardless of sexual orientation? Yes. Do we um, assess, uh, um, help people get in? Uh, yes. Do we um, participate in coordinated entry? Yes. Our next is housing retention. So I'm just wanting you to notice that in that section, I was hitting yes on everything in the affirmative, right? And, and yes will always be the affirmative, but going through and hitting yes on every question does not mean you get all of the points. So you'll notice as we get into some of these questions, the wording you're gonna wanna be careful that you're not just auto completing everything yes. Does project terminate participants for failure to participate? Well, no, we do not. See, if I had hit yes there, I would not receive the points. Do you terminate projects for engaging in, or terminate participants for engaging in substance use? No. And it's not even on the same page, right? We had a yes to a no question or two. Okay, and then we have our last housing first section, which is participant engagement. Do we have participant choice? Do they engage in uh, providing input into our policies and procedures? Are we using person-centered planning? Will the project be staffed and trained? Um, ba -ba. Yes. Okay, performance. So um, real quick, I'm just gonna pull up the uh, ERPA instructions for email. These are the instructions that you can find on the IHCDA website. Are you looking at an instructions page now? I hope so. Okay, good. Um, this front end is gonna show you how to log in. 
And then you're going to be able to go and look here at your questions. So notice that we have um, performance questions listed here and the actual data points that you are going to be reviewing. So please take a look at your APR and your APR CAPER review tool information. Um, all of this information is provided on, H on our HMI section of our website. There's tons of training available on, on, on these data points, but just make sure you're, you're um, looking at, at this data. So you've got 6A, 6B, 6C, and 6E. You're going to pull data points from. On 6E, please note that these are date ranges, one to three days, three to six days. If you have anybody outside of three to six days, that's um, where you would say, no, I have folks um, who are exited in more than seven days. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up these performance questions and start getting to these here. Ooh, okay. So yeah, this starts on page eight and this will be your guide. So all my error rates on my APR are below five. They're below five. They are below 15. You'll notice this one because it's housing income data. Uh, we give you a little bit more wiggle room. These data points come from the HMIS data quality standards. So these are data points that our HMIS team is, again, already providing pretty significant training on. And uh, are the coffee talks and, and all of those areas are really important uh, to supporting good data quality. So if you if you have not already participated in HMIS quality, uh, each my data quality coffee talks encourage you or a member of your team to do that to learn more about these data points and why they're so important. All right, so I'm gonna have served a hundred people. Um, fifty of them stayed and fifty of them exited to a positive destination. So you'll notice this is a people question, and and later on we will be asking household questions. So here we have a household questions. We had 50 households, total households that exited to a homeless or unknown destination. I'm gonna talk about this really briefly. We had two. So in this situation, all of my households are two person households, whether they're minors or not. Um, and two households, that would have been probably four people or it could have been um, three people and, or, or you know, it would have, anyway. It, the, we are not checking that these numbers somehow add up in some way. I'm just trying to show you that this is a household's questions, meaning this could have been 100, you know, it could have been four people, it could have been five people, it could have been one person, or no, it could have been one person, it could have been two people at the least, right? Because each of those people is a household. And it's going to calculate these percentages for me. If you are a mathy person, and I know there's not many of us in social services who are, but if you happen to be a mathy person and you check this math on your own, or you do a calculation on your own, or you look at these numbers and you feel like they don't make sense, feel free to reach out to us. We wanna make sure these are calculating correctly. We wanna make sure you're pulling the right data point. Cause if you can imagine, if I happen to use my my viewer and say, oh no, I, I, you know, I go on autopilot, I say a hundred households. And it was actually a hundred people. Um, you know, you're going to start messing with your math. So that's why we're trying to be clear about whether or not we're asking for households or people. And again, you'll notice on your APR reviewer tool that we're telling you which lines, um, which lines to be looking at for exits to homelessness, right? So up here, we are looking at Q5A, and now we're looking at heads of households. That's how we count households um, using the APR. I know it's not a perfect measure for all things, uh, but it is a way we have a common data point that we're all looking at um, that is as close to a household count as we could possibly get. All right, so here I have total clients who are adults, I'll say 50, total clients who maintained or increased income at stay or exit. So again, in that APR reviewer, excuse me, in that detailed instructions, you're gonna see which questions we're asking you about. This one is gonna require you to do a little bit of math. So notice that A1 and A2 are separate questions. That's because A1 is a question about stayers and A2 is a question about leavers. And we want you to receive credit for both of those. Um, we're gonna say 30 did. I This is a great project, man, I got crazy outcomes. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> All right, so our utilization um, here, again, it's going to take you to uh, which questions on your detail report. 
and it's going to show you see how that percentage changed as I added numbers. So don't panic if you see 72% if you've got one of these boxes empty. All right, so wanna, um, I'm going to hit on one other item before I change this. Well, two other items before I change this page um, because I want to be clear on a couple of things. When we are asking you about percentage of funding, we are asking you, and this is clear in the detailed instructions, about your fiscal year 2020 funding. Last year, we made a policy clarification inside the uh, COC competition renewal policies in particular about what year we were evaluating projects for whether or not they would have the reallocation policy applied to them. The, uh, the policy was unclear in the past, and we clarified that we are going to talk about the, the, the fiscal year that everyone has closed out of. So nobody right now has an active grant that is from fiscal year 2020. Everybody is operating in 2021. Some of you may have your 2022. Uh, we just got some grant agreements this week. So good news. I should I should have shared that at the beginning. Good news. We're getting grant agreements. <laughs> I know some of them are very late from HUD. So if you are operating 22 money, that's fantastic. But we are talking about your 2020 money, not your 21 money. If you are a IHTDA subrecipient, again, you're going to see this in the detailed instructions. You're going to want to look at your grant agreement that lists 2020 or that lists 22 in it. Um, I'll show you here where you can see that. Um, it says, for example, it's going to say, oh, excuse me, it's going to say 021, not 2022. I'm already confused myself. Your look at it's going to say, you know, you know, RR021 dash and a bunch of extra numbers. So look for this in the middle of your grant agreement with us, or if you wanna log into IHTDA online and see the, the claim, uh, look at your recent claims, you're looking for this one that says 021. You should be able to get your HUD closeout report for that year and say I had, um, I had $200,000 and I only spent 100,000 of it. Oh, a million of it, that would not be good. So I spent 50%. And that's going to trigger this reallocation policy rationale to be required. If I say I spent 190,000, that requirement goes away. That goes away for me. I don't need to give us more information. For those of you who did not meet the reallocation or or spent less than 75% of your 2020 award, you're going to be you're going to put that information and in. it's going to prompt this information. We met with almost all of you to discuss that you are going to need to provide this information. This is contextual information we provide to our board. Um, our board appreciates having this information. If you type in here, we don't know. I'm going to tell you right now, that's not a great rationale to the board for why, why you've improved spending or how you're planning on improving spending. It's your choice what you put in this space. I will say in the past when we have implemented this policy, and I've only been here one year, but I, I think I got a good sense of, of the board in this group. They don't want to involuntarily reallocate projects that have made changes and are spending better. Um, we will provide, um, you know, your spending information that we can uh, about this most recent year alongside all of the all of those who, who did not meet the 75 percent threshold so that the board can see it. But if you want to provide information here about what's going on, what changes you made, why your spending was lower than 75%, this is the place that you do that. We're not going to implement another process to do that. This is really streamlining that for us so we get all of this information at the beginning, and that way we don't have to ask for it again later. You don't have to worry about providing it. It's all here. It's a, a fairly simple question, though. So I would encourage you and your team to be thoughtful about what you put in here and know that our board will look at this. And this will help inform whether or not they decide to involuntarily reallocate part of your project. Now, I will also say, um, as you move on, there is a, a portion later in the application where you can indicate that you'd like to reallocate. So that is separate and in, in a later portion of the form. The other thing I wanted to hit on, because this came up as a question when I was working with one of our testers, and I just want to note, this this question. So this is a question about how people positively exited or remained in permanent housing. This is a question not about any kind of exit that wasn't this. So you're not going to see like an inverse of numbers. We are talking about only individuals. And again, that detailed instruction will say that we're only talking about individuals who left to a homeless destination or data was refused or not collected. So if you have people who went to jail, if you have people who went to treatment, if you have someone who died, um, 
these are not quote unquote counting against you, but they're they're just missing from the equation. And that it's it's completely addressed in the scoring. You don't need to worry about, well, some people aren't being counted at all. Those people don't need to be counted because we're only focusing on what we would call a permanent housing exit and a homeless or or unknown exit. So please don't try and add in everybody who went to jail. You only need to add in these folks. Um, I hope that's a relief to you, <laughs> um, but it's it doesn't negatively impact you that we're not accounting for what happened to every single person in your project last year. All right, we are almost done. Equity and representation questions are next. And these questions are new. You're going to notice this is going to auto populate from your previous page. So if you didn't serve 100 people, you're not going to be able to change it here. You have to go back to that other section to enter that information correctly, but it's auto populating here for that. Um, and then you're going to enter the total number of persons served from that experience domestic violence. And again, that question in your detailed instructions is on, on page 10. You're going to go to 14A. So of those 100 people, we'll say 25% of 25 of them uh, had a history of domestic violence. And again, how many people had three plus uh, mental or physical conditions? And um, this is uh, this is persons, right? So this is um, anybody in the project. It could be a dependent. It could be a spouse. Anybody in the project has a disabling or physical condition. That's how that measure is counted on the APR. And we'll say, again, it's easy because it's counting people. Then we'll just respond to the remainder of these questions. So these are the last APR related questions here. Uh, I'm going to select all the people who got equity um, uh, and diversity training. Uh, anybody? Yes, we track outcomes for households based on their demographics. Uh, we have two people on our board with lived experience. Uh, one of our managers has lived experience. And we'll say that one of them was in the last one of them had that lived experience in the last seven years. And this is actually something that HUD puts in our application. They, they ask us specifically about recent experiences of lived experience and they specify the last seven years. All right, nearly done. And then we'll take questions. Bonus and deductions. This is narrative bonus. So I'm not going to put anything in here. You would write your answer to that question. Yes, we do. Yes, we have policies. And then I could talk about what those policies are. Um, we're not gonna ask for attachments of those right now. We're just wanting to learn more about what people are doing. Um, yes, we are gathering feedback. And again, it's gonna populate these if I hit yes, they're gonna disappear if I hit no. And then yes, I'd like to voluntarily reallocate some funding. I'd like to voluntarily reallocate 15,000. And look, it'll populate for me. If I hit no, it goes away. And next. So again, that information will be provided to us. We will confirm that with you so that if perchance you make a mistake and you don't want to do that, we are not going to just go off of one time you told us um, and we thought it was what you wanted. So I, I know that's a serious decision that you, you're thinking about. Go ahead and upload your related files. And then once these are uploaded, this is going to turn into a save button, but because I'm not going to upload files right now, it's not going to turn into a save button. So you'll see all my sections are complete except for this last one. I suppose I could go ahead and attach files. I'll do that really quickly. Um, but I'm not going to share my screen as I do, so you don't have to look at the contents of my downloads. <laughs> So um, I've heard from some folks that overall things are, are pretty intuitive, that they're, they felt pretty good about the process. We've, we have hit some snags. We've had some people have some issues. I feel like so far we've been able to address most of those pretty quickly. Um, we haven't had any um, anything that we haven't either, we're, that we're either not working on or that we, um, we felt like was impossible to fix. I will say there is a possibility, uh, those of you who have gone through funding um, or you know changes in systems, you know maybe a new donor database or anything like that, we may find something down the line that is not working. And my goal is to make that impact on you as minimal as possible. 
Um, I don't want to have people need to resubmit things. So please know that if we ask you to send something in again, it's not for lack of trying to find another alternative, <laughs> because I know that you already put a lot of work and time into completing this. So I don't take it lightly that when we ask you to send us something again, it's frustrating. I also want to say that I'm that, as I mentioned, you know, we're hoping that this will continue to roll into more of a full service uh, platform where we can do um, uh, ongoing grants management with you. And what that would mean is, is that that would, you know, significantly make it a lot easier for you and us to, to do what we need to do. Um, so I will say when I, I, this maybe is something that I did not realize. It is, I was able to attach and upload documents. If I needed to change what I up uploaded, I would just replace it. You are going to want whatever this is all in a single file. So again, um, don't try and upload like 15 files. You're going to want all of your APR together, all of your housing first, sam.gov and, and all that. It did not hit require me to save. It just did a close. I'm assuming because when I uploaded, there was a save on each of these individual ones. But now you'll see at the top of my application, I have the ability to submit. This button was not here before. So like I said, if I if I had something wrong in here, um, I don't have to submit. It's not all automatically submitted for me. So you could work on parts of this. Um, you could decide to go back and double check things um, and come back and not have submitted, which I think is a, an advantage over some of the systems we've used in the past um, and, and hopefully allows you to, to just double check things if you're not feeling confident. Um, once you submit, there is not another... Um, you can't go back and resubmit. We can send it back to you. And if you need to do that, that's fine. You won't be penalized if it's within the application period. So if it's before June 26th, you realize you made a huge mistake and you need to fix it, we will send it back to you. Um, so please don't, don't hesitate to reach out. Let us know as soon as possible because my hope is that we can start scoring these in advance of the due date for, for those who submit early. Um, I, I, I know that that could bite us uh, in the end, but I think the sooner we can get you your score, the more comfortable we'll all feel. Another thing to, before I open it up to questions that I, I've already heard a question about today is, you know, I'd really like a copy of this. Um, is it possible for me to get a downloadable version of this? Um, the answer is yes. Um, I don't know that the answer is yes today, like we'll get you it today, but I know we are working on getting that PDF functionality. In the meantime, if you wanted to screenshot your answers, you could do that. I know that's a pain. So if you just want to wait on that PDF opportunity, you know, uh, we're they are building that for us. Um, I will be able to, as an admin, be able to export all of this in a multitude of formats. Um, I I know they're they're working on on a number of ways. So either way, we will be able to get this out for you if you absolutely need it, like tomorrow. My re recommendation would probably be that you screenshot what you're what you're answering so that you have it. But if you're willing to wait a couple of weeks, um, we should have some additional functionality for you to get this out and and save for your records. What questions do we have? I've got lots of folks on the line who can help, um, but I'm fully prepared for you to stump us as well. So I know this is all new um, inside this system, but I hope that. The expectation of the kinds of questions we're asking and the information we're asking for in here is not new information to your agency. Um, if it's new to you, I hope it's because you're new um, as a staff member or maybe new to this process. But we've tried to kind of be as transparent as we can with this this year and happy to, you know, do any technical assistance or answer questions now. And I'm going to stop talking because I've talked a lot. Where did you say we could find the instructions on the IHCDI page? Excuse me, under 2023, and I see some questions in the chat, so we'll try and go through these if we have still have some unanswered. Um, under 2023, it's going to say internal competition 2023. It's going to say you can find detailed instructions for renewal here, and there's a link there that should open up a PDF of the detailed instructions pages for you. Um, yeah, it's just open for me. So hopefully you don't have an issue. It is a PDF. So if you have weirdness with PDFs, that might be a problem. 
Okay. I'm going to scroll through questions here. Thanks, Lori, for responding to that, Kelly, from question from Kelly. Yeah, Cyn Cynthia, yeah. So we you don't need to place folks who exited to jail in any in any location. They are not being counted in this question. Only folks who exited to homelessness or to an unknown or client ref client refused destination. So while jail is a a not positive exit to 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 HUD or to the VA, whoever you may be reporting some of this stuff to, we're not calculating that in this calculation. Thanks, Cynthia. Yeah. Mm. Yep, and yep, 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 yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thanks, Howard. Yeah, sorry, I'm just finally able to look through these because I can't see the chat when I'm sharing my screen. Yes, Jenna. So if you, um, I was, I checked on this different way to phrase this today, and maybe Lori can help me if I'm saying this weirdly because, um, my experience with the APR is primarily the zip file when I was uh, administering programs. I primarily, that's how I primarily looked at data. So um, when you are using the APR to review and, and complete your application, my perspective and our preferences is that you upload that APR to Sage and then you download it and it creates kind of a PDF report. The, the, the charts are pretty well organized. Uh, they they correspond pretty well to the detailed instructions. It's much easier than, uh, the, well, depending on how you're using <laughs> your data, for the purposes of this, it's much easier than a zip file. Um, we prefer it in that format because it's all there at once. We can search it and all that. But if you give it to us in a zip file because that's the only way you know how to use it or feel comfortable, I understand. My real preference is just please don't attach a picture of your APR or an unsearchable file because that just involves a lot of scro scrolling. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Lisa, so asking for supportive services funding looks like Howard is, has provided some clarification for you. If you'd like to do a budget amendment or if you're looking at doing an expansion to add services, let definitely get in touch with us and we can uh, address that. So anybody who is interested in consolidating or doing an expansion, anything like that, we'll address that once we get the NOFO out. But we've met with many of you who are thinking about consolidation or expansion kind of one-on-one, -on -one, and we're always happy to take those meetings anytime you have them to answer any questions or concerns you might have. Um, but we'll go through what that actually looks like in the competition later this summer um, so that you can see it especially if you're a direct HUD funded project, you can see how you're supposed to do it in the system and, and have that uh, information. Do, do, do. Yes, 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 great. Thank you, Jessica. So for those of you, and I don't know, hopefully Jessica's on or she'll see this recording later. Um, so for those of you who are domestic violence bonus funding projects, uh, you are um, a subrecipient of a larger um, IHCDA uh, COC project. So we received the grant from HUD, we subgranted it to you, and we still need every single applicant uh, or recipient of DV bonus funds to complete a renewal. Uh, we are going, if you'll recall, and I'm happy to provide this link to the oh. DV providers, we had a DV specific session about how renewal works for you, but this is part of the COC competition and is specific to the HUD application that we have to complete. And your score will um, will be ranked essentially, but we consolidate those scores all together ultimately when we actually put it into the ranking. So the highest ranking DV bonus project, uh, let's say it's, it's, you know, Rachel's DV project and I'm under there with all the rest of the rapid rehousing projects and I score, you know, 100 points and I'm, you know, ranked two, um, all the DV bonus projects will come up under that same ranking because it is a single project. Similar to those of you who are a uh, subrecipient of IHCDA under a multi-sub award. So the Integrated Supportive Housing Award that Meridian and uh, oh, Meridian and someone else have, I can't remember. Uh, Aspire and, and City of Lafayette and CAM are on an award together. 
uh, we have we're not just talking about DV bonus. There are a couple other agencies that have several uh, sub subs under a single HUD award. Um, you still need to complete a renewal for that project because we need everybody to have been competitively evaluated, even if it is a single uh, grant to HUD. Looks like Howard was able to answer a ton of these questions. Thank you, Howard. Yeah, Mike, what's up? Sorry, having trouble with my camera, Rachel. I can't in changing platforms. It won't unmute or it won't work. So no worries. Uh, so I can get into Access Indiana. I can see everything, but I do have others that I want in the agency to be able to work on that. So I just wanted to make sure I had clear my action step is would be to send you their specific emails. Is that what you need or their specific names? Yeah. Can you give us a name and an email? Um, and then let us know the agency they need to be affiliated under. I know, I know that you're Aspire, but it'll yeah. help make it faster for my developers to grab that and put that information in. Um, yeah, we'll create an account and then we'll enable that account. So uh, we're happy to do that if you have some other folks that are going to be working on it. Okay, perfect. I'll get that to you today. Thank you. I will say if you log in and you're able to get into Access Indiana, but you don't have a, um, ooh, that's a good question. Uh, you don't see the portal, uh, you're getting an error message once you get in there. Um, that's probably because we might not have enabled you yet. And again, please email us uh, and we'll go ahead and, and the, the team will enable your user access. Cause I know that happened twice today. We had a couple of questions like that. Lori, um, that's a really good question. And I actually don't know the answer to this. So. If you have a joint transitional rapid rehousing grant, we're actually not providing very good guidance in there on what they're running. Um, Howard or Lori, I, hear, I see Howard kind of motioning your lips. I don't know if it's related to this question or something else, but um, we don't actually provide very good guidance yet on this. And I don't want to say this the wrong way because I'm not technically uh, speaking HMIS well. I'm trying to think what we did last year. And in my understanding, typically the joint programs are separate entries in in HMIS. Yeah, they are. Lori, okay, do you have any on that? Yep. Yeah. Jumping in here. <laughs> so if they're set up as two separate projects, which they will be in HMIS, then you're going to need to run two separate APRs, even though it's a joint funding. I know it's it it doesn't make sense, but they are set up in HMIS and DV client track as a TH project and a rapid rehousing project. So therefore two reports. You're muted, Rachel. Thank you, Amber. I see Amber is coming here too. I appreciate you bringing that up, Erin. That's a deficiency in our instructions and we'll correct that. That needs to be clearer to folks who have that joint component. Thank you for letting us know. Other questions? Ooh, yeah, no, John, that's a really good question. Um, if you could consolidate the the APR files into a single thing, that would be great. Um, but I will talk to our developers about maybe letting people upload multiple APRs um, and see if we could get that changed. The That might cause a delay, though. So I think the preference would be right now if you could consolidate those two um, APRs into a single file. But I'll, we'll push something out about that. Thanks for that heads up. That's a good that's a good note.
All right. Well, I want to give a couple of shout outs to some folks as we kind of wrap up today. Um, I'll go ahead and turn off the recording. I'm assuming we don't have any other questions. Thank you all.